think, I think for me on my journey, after I really like settled in my heart, I'm following Jesus. That was never really, I think I, I always believed in Jesus, but when it really awakened in me, I think the next step was understanding my calling. And I felt probably at 17, 18 years of age, really called into full-time ministry to preach the gospel. But the thing that I struggled with so long was that I couldn't really find a model. I couldn't find somebody that was like, I want to be like that guy. And I'm not saying that there wasn't great people or great examples. I just, when I would see guys, I go, that doesn't really line up. That's not really what I look like or how I would do it. And I remember I got this word when I was probably, I don't know, 19 or 20, and it was a prophecy over my life that you're going you're gonna to really preach and you're going to lead in a different way and you need to do it in your own unique way. And that was like a really like kind of cool confirming moment for me. Like, all right, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be me. I'm going to try to fully be authentic to me. Yet I just remember so many times like growing up like, hey, don't let fear stop you. Hey, like, you know, let's pray to have influence to kings, to presidents, all these kind of prayers. I never, ever dreamed that fear was going to arise or criticism would arise to try to stop me, not from the world, but really from inside the camp of believers. And I think a big challenge for me on my journey of discovering my calling is going, how do I continue to step out in authenticity of what God's called me to do? I mean, we're doing a, I don't know what we're doing right now, but this is all part of that. And, but I, I think for you, like, how have you dealt with the criticism? How have you dealt with the fear aspect of, I, I remember even when you came out with, um, what, what, I think it was Zion. Was Zion the first record that you went back into the studio with? Or... Aftermath. So that was a studio record. I remember having talks and just, oh man, like this is like a studio record. And I remember you said this beautiful, beautiful thing to me. You said, I want to make a record that kids on the subway home can put on their ears and worship God to. And it was so different because everything else we had seen before that was a live setting and a worship atmosphere. But you were thinking in an unconventional way that when before it came out, there was some criticism or questions. How, how have you broken through those boxes or how do you practically break through those boxes in your life? Um, Cause I'm trying to figure out if you could counsel me for a moment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, I think that whatever we do, like what, it, you, there has to be that something that motivates us. Like, cause then, so for the easiest thing for me, again, when it comes to a record or a project or, is I think about individuals. So like, um, when we do a tour, I l literally imagine maybe a friend of mine who I want to come to that tour who w has never been into a church environment. How do we connect to that person? Or I think about someone who's been like kind of in church their entire lives and they're just drained and they're, they're crushed and they're tired and they're weary and, and they're giving this thing a shot. And how do they come and, and feel refreshed and experience, um, you know, peace in that place and, and a Jesus that they probably believe in deep down but they're not seeing in their world around them. So like think of literal individuals and it motivates you. And, and I feel like the call of God is, that's how it works for me. So like I, I don't know how the call of God works for other people and there's probably a lot of people who are like, I'm waiting for God's call. But I think God calls us to individuals, you know. He, he very rarely calls us to, to the crowds or to the multitudes. It's, it's to the ones. To the, and so I think if you... Think about that for you. It could be a friend. It could be someone you know. It could be even yourself. Like, if you think about um, s specific people, it's amazing how God is able to take the story that you're telling to that one person and make it just so much wider than we could ever do. Again, it comes back to that, like, infinite possibilities through, like, a limited thing. And so I always get, mo like, with Aftermath, it was a season we were in. We were doing, a lot of us were doing the live worship albums. And rather than trying to do two things that compete with each other, it was like, look, this opportunity we have united in this season. We started out as a youth band. Now we've kind of, we've traveled around the world. We've done all this stuff. Uh, and this next season, I really saw the Aftermath, Zion, and Empires as, as kind of a three-tier project, a, a bit of a journey. It was like, all right, let's just take a story, let's just take a, Let's just go on a, a journey where we're just tr trying to create music um, for the per people who would never buy uh, Christian music, but but want it and need it and and want something to listen to or something that helps them in their own walk with God, even if it meant that less people were going to buy it or less people were going to come to the shows. It was like that's what we felt called to do, and I, I don't know. We're, we're like in this process again, so it's really interesting talking and thinking about it because we're starting to work on this next season, I don't know what it looks like yet, but there's these like little stirrings and these inklings. And it's like, it's so counterintuitive, I guess, to probably what we should do to jump on the momentum, even that people are saying you should do this and you should do A, B, C, D. And I'm going, I'm, I've got this feeling that we should do this other thing. And, um, and it's terrifying. And, but it's actually, it's, it's, it, 
it motivates me more than anything else. And um, you quickly learn that the joy in, in what we do is not in the success, it's not in the big moments. Like when, we're, when, when all this is done, like and when I look back at the journey that we've had, I don't remember like the, the um, American Airlines arena moments. Like I don't remember, like even I, I saw that on video, the video of that, because we filmed here a few, that time. I was watching it, I was like, God, I don't remember any of that. Like what we remember is, I just remember these like little moments often building relationships within our own team, like conversations at five in the morning on the bus about the real things in life and doing the journey. And I, I remember, like, I, I think about, you know, the moments where you're spending hours at, at four in the morning because we, no one's done art and so we're actually creating art. This reminds me of um, us doing art for one of our projects years and years ago. Um, but, like, the graphic designer kind of got sick and didn't finish it wherever. So we're just like, well, let's just paint a wall and film it and that'll be the front cover. And it was just, they're my favourite moments because it's like, it's not what people think, you know. It's, it's the journey and it's the process. And I think we have to be okay with the process. Um, and anyone who's an artist or a songwriter or, in, in, you know, process is everything. And when that is... When, when you treasure that more than the end result, like one, it takes all the pressure off whether or not that's great or not, but you also, you just get to allow, I think, God to, to work on you the whole time through. Yeah.